The angel said to them, Don't be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all people. Unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. So reads Luke chapter 2, verse 10. I want to encourage you to choose joy. The circumstances surrounding the first Christmas weren't very joyful. Roman soldiers bullied the Jews. Mary and Joseph lived under the poverty level. Jesus' birth took place in an unsanitary shed. The shepherds worked the night shift. Despite the negative circumstances that existed on that first Christmas, God's angel said, I bring you good news of great joy. 33 years later, just hours before he was crucified, Jesus said to his disciples, as recorded in John 15, verse 11, I have told you this so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. About 30 years after that, the Apostle Paul, writing at a time of severe persecution, wrote, The fruit of the Spirit is joy. That's in Galatians 5.22, of course. One of the distinctive characteristics of a genuine Christian is a joyful spirit. That's because regardless of what happens in Washington, D.C. or sports arenas or our homes, we have a hope that can never perish, spoil or fade, kept in heaven for us, as Peter writes in 1 Peter 1. But frankly, I encounter a lot of Christians who aren't very joyful, especially older Christians. Instead, our lives are often characterized by complaining about what's wrong with us physically, pining for the past when we were important, or criticizing the younger generation for their lack of respect, and whining about how horrible the government has become. Often, the older we get, the more ne negative and grumpy we become. One teenager complained, my grandpa is OCD, and a friend asked, he has obsessive compulsion disorder? No, he's old, cranky, and dangerous. Well, that should not be. The Bible doesn't say rejoice in the Lord until you're 55. And then you have a spiritual license to become increasingly cantankerous. No, it says rejoice in the Lord always in Philippians 4.4. 4. The Bible says in Proverbs 17.22, according to the King James Version, a merry heart does good like medicine. Older believers who are joyful are contagious they're fun to be around, and they have a positive witness for Christ. People who are old, cranky, and dangerous are not, and they're wasting away their lives one day at a time. Jesus said in John 10, 10, I've come that you might have life and have it to the full. This Christmas season, may I challenge you to choose to be joyful and live every day to the fullest. I'll admit, that's not easy. It's hard to be joyful when the body hurts, people disappoint, and the future is uncertain. Nehemiah wrote in Nehemiah 8, verse 10, The joy of the Lord is my strength. When you choose to be joyful, regardless of circumstances, you'll be strengthened and lift the spirit of others. When you choose to be miserable, you'll weaken yourself and drag others down. So it becomes a daily choice. James chapter 1, verse 2 and 3 reads, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. That scripture is a challenge to us, and it's been a challenge to me. And uh, that means that I have to act contrary than, to the way that sometimes I feel. Well, this Christmas season, I want to challenge you. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit, as Paul wrote in Romans 15, verse 13. I want to challenge you to choose joy. Now, most of you who are watching this or listen to this, and by the way, thank you for inviting me into your home or office. I, um, I know that for you like me, there's been a lot of unpleasant stuff happen the last 18 months or so, almost two years to us, to our country, to loved ones and their health. But it could always be worse. We don't live in parts of Tennessee or Kentucky or Northeast Arkansas or in the Boot Hill of Missouri where there's people trying to pick up the pieces of their lives, literally, and their possessions are scattered to the wind. Um, 
no house, some cases no vehicles, no clothes, but the clothes they had on when the tornadoes hit last weekend. Um, some cases no jobs, and the tornado hit their um, in those areas, especially hard in Bowling Green, Kentucky, and Mayfield, Kentucky, and other nearby towns. Uh, there was a heavy loss of life, of course, and all this took place um, two weeks before Christmas, 2021. So, what I'm saying is, most of us don't have anything to complain about. I mean, we don't like a lot of things going on in our country or in our lives or with the cost of gas up and inflation surging and all these other things. We don't like a lot of what's happening in our nation's capital. And and um, I understand that, you know, but we have to understand it could always be worse. And it is worse for a lot of people. So let's choose joy. Let's pray for those that are hurting and in serious need at this time. And just stop and count your blessings. Put yourself in a position of all those families in Kentucky um, or Tennessee who have lost loved ones besides everything they own practically. Uh, again, just less than just barely two full weeks when it happened before Christmas. So they've got some terrible circumstances to deal with. Continue to pray for them. Pray for those who are able to minister to them for their needs, and um, pray that God will continue to work through his people who are close in those areas where can, they can more practically minister to them uh, than we can some distance away. But we can help a lot with our prayers. And I just challenge you, again, to choose joy and to pray for those who have some serious reasons uh, to be unjoyful at this time. I have been impressed by some of the videos I've seen, some of the news reports I've seen of people who were standing in the rubble of what they once owned, and yet we're very thankful that they were alive. And um, I've heard this phrase over and over again, well, this was just stuff. This can be replaced. So let's, um, let's consider those around us that are far worse off than we are and be prayerful for them, encourage them, do what we can. Um, certainly pray for them and do some heart searching about our own attitudes and choose joy.